RBA, the Diamond District project is going to be a huge hit or a complete disaster. We're going to cover the details in this video. Well, if you don't know, Richmond, Virginia is getting a huge facelift for the price tag of $2.4 billion. And what does that impact to the community? And when is this all going to shape up? First, this project is a huge deal because this is the biggest development and money scale for the city's history. Now, looking at the plans, we're looking at an 11-acre park. Of course, they're going to redo the stadium itself. Um, and we're looking at 1,200-plus housing units, a couple hotels, and uh, some small businesses and restaurants. And specifically, they are looking to target a lot of Black-owned small businesses. Originally planned for the end date of 2025 spring to all be completed, they've already pushed that out back a year. Uh, so we're now we're looking at 2026. Now let's look at the fun stuff. How do they plan to raise $2.4 billion with this project? Now, there's no public budget out there where we can kind of break down here's where the money's going and where they're getting it from. Uh, but the city did say that they plan to increase a tax increment to divert tax dollars from new development to help pay for this project. And a tax side note, if you've been paying attention to Richmond City's tax uh, laws, uh, they just increased short-term rental taxes for Richmond City. Uh, you now have to pay 8% of each room rented for short-term rentals. Now, the developer is 100% of liability in this project, and they also have to pay a $20 million down payment or commitment fund uh, to move forward with the deal. So with the developer actually recently selling a whole condo townhouse uh, community for the price tag of $34 million, that might help make the deposit. Also talking about numbers, will this make a huge investment for the city at the price tag of this $2.4 billion? I don't think it's going to be a huge turnover like a Scott's edition where there's a big turnover and younger crowd and high price living. The developers already put out that they don't think it's going to be as profitable as they originally imagined and blaming a lot of the interest rates for that issue. And I was talking about housing. They are planning to put on a lot of uh, low income affordable housing, which is great. But keep in mind that if you are looking to live here, you might be capped out uh, because you make too much. Now, 20% of the rental units are capped out per person of making 60 to 70% of the medium income, and they've already allocated at least 100 homes for public housing. Now, 20% of the 600 homes available are going to be capped out at making 60 to 70% of the median income. And there's going to be a lot of builder incentives for people to actually get into these houses. Here's my personal take on it. I think progress is moving slowly forward. Do I think it's going to be completed in 2026? I don't think so. Maybe 2027, 2028. They even put out an article that they're actually holding off right now because of interest rates, which poses the question, what do interest rates need to be at for them to continue the development? Financing wise, I think they're a little slow on things. I think they need to kind of get a grasp on where all this money is going to be coming from and where is it all going to be going to and create a budget behind that. So I think it's going to be a crazy investment for the city. I think it's too soon to tell. I think it's too soon for other people to tell just with the public information that we have out in the articles that we have kind of posted. Um, I think a lot of people, uh, the builders kind of around the Diamond District that are building in communities around there, I think a big incentive for them is to tell people that it's going to be a great investment because this big project is going to be happening. Uh, but you got to be careful with that because this project is like five years out and uh, we don't know exactly for sure how it's gonna impact the values of the surrounding homes. And we also gotta look at the traffic aspect behind the whole community itself. I think that, uh, you know, putting 1200 plus homes, a couple hotels, a bunch of restaurants, businesses, and a huge park, you gotta be able to regulate the traffic and fluctuate the people in and out with that kind of massive size of community that you're building. So uh, I haven't really seen too much of any kind of road plans or kind of expanding roads or kind of map out um, how traffic is going to flow kind of with that. But I think that's also an issue that needs to be uh, looked at and kind of explained before anything else. So hopefully that gave you some information. Uh, reach out if you need anything, help with buy or sell kind of in the community or have any questions or kind of thoughts around the whole project itself. See you on the next one.